Mercedes look way behind their rivals in the World Championship, but Red Bull are sure that Mercedes will be back in the title fight before long. For Helmut Marko, he said that Mercedes are now learning what it's like to be on the same level as everyone else. How is he so sure? Did Mercedes hold back their true power in 2014, and how could a light sensor be the secret to unlocking the performance of this year's Mercedes? Stay tuned to find out. Foundations of Mercedes It's hard to describe just how dominant Mercedes were between 2014 and 2021. Mercedes-Benz wanted to get back into Formula One after being absent for more than 50 years. Way back in 1954 and 1955, the team won two world championships with the Argentinian driver Juan Manuel Fangio, and after 1955, Mercedes pulled their teams out of all motorsport competitions. This was in response to the 24 Hours Le Mans disaster, where one of their drivers was killed along with 83 other spectators. Mercedes didn't come back to Formula One until 2010, when they took over the Braun GP team, which was started by former Ferrari engineer Ross Braun. That team had just pulled off a fairy tale season and won Jensen Button his only world championship. After being gone for so long, they wanted the best of the best. And who's the best in Formula One? Michael Schumacher. They brought him out of retirement for one last stint. Ross Braun stayed with the team for a few years after the takeover and worked with Schumacher to build Mercedes into a well-oiled machine. They lost out to Red Bull in the first few years, but from 2014 onwards, it was the Mercedes show. They were making up for lost time and won everything. Signing Lewis Hamilton was another brilliant move. Just a season later, he won the championship by almost 150 points. His closest rival was his teammate, and that's how it stayed for the next seven seasons. It was Mercedes, a big gap, then everybody else. The best result any non-Mercedes driver could hope for was third place. That was virtually a win. This year, though, a range of regulations have been put into place which have stopped the silver arrow in their tracks. Freezing. Engines are the most important part of a Formula One car. Without an engine, it can't move. So when Formula announced its engine freeze that kicks off this year, it led to rapid development from all constructors. Teams have until the start of September to finalize their engine designs. After that point, their engines will be frozen until 2025, meaning they won't be able to modify them for three years. The first deadline for the freeze was earlier this year in March. That's when the basic engine designs, including layouts, fuel suppliers, and all components, had to be submitted to the FIA. The only exceptions to the rule are if there are safety or reliability concerns. Teams will not be able to modify anything for performance enhancements. This is a massive change, and it will make the next three years either very interesting or very boring. So why did the FIA decide on an engine freeze? The main idea is to cut costs and allow smaller teams to compete. When it was proposed last year, it got a unanimous vote in approval. The FIA, Formula One management, as well as all of the teams have agreed to it. But which teams will be regretting it? But for those worried about Mercedes being stuck at the bottom of the grid for the next four years, calm down. There are many possible reasons for the Silver Arrows performing slowly, and nobody has the data Mercedes are looking at. What laser did Lewis have on his car in Melbourne that could unlock the car's secrets? And how were Mercedes hiding their power in 2014? All of that is coming right up. A bumpy ride. What's standing in the way of the Mercedes car's potential? It's a recurring headache for the engineers, and it's called porpoising. Just a few months ago, barely anyone had heard of the word, but by the first session of testing in Barcelona, it was the buzzword of the paddock. Porpoising is when the air underneath a car changes pressure or the floor touches the ground, leading to a sudden loss of downforce. The result is a bobbing up and down that significantly impacts the top speed. So, the fact that Mercedes were almost 10 kilometers slower in the speed trap in Bahrain could partly be explained by porpoising. They've been wrestling with the bouncing since testing, and it seems like they are still not on top of it. In some ways, that's good news. As driver George Russell has said, if the team can fix the issue, then they would immediately win a huge chunk of lap time. And Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko agrees. He thinks that as soon as Mercedes gets control of the porpoising issue, they would be back in the fight for the championship. It might be good news that porpoising is holding Mercedes back so much. If this is their main issue right now, the engine of the W13 might not be turned up to its maximum yet. Increasing the power of the engine right now may not be beneficial since the top speed is affected by porpoising. You might think, why wouldn't Mercedes have their engine on full power all the time? Actually, it wouldn't be the first time that Mercedes were holding back on power, but last time they did it, it was for very different reasons. Too much power? Have you ever slowed down so that your kid sibling can win a race, or at least feel more competitive? Well, it turns out that's what Mercedes were doing. It was 2014 and the beginning of a new era. The turbo hybrid engines, or power units as they were now called, were unveiled. Lewis Hamilton said that it was the most difficult season to predict because no team had any real idea where their competitors 
competitors were in terms of performance, but all questions were answered at the opening Grand Prix in Australia. Despite Hamilton retiring his car to conserve the engine, his teammate showed blistering pace and won the race by more than 26 seconds, and the closest car behind them was also a Mercedes-powered car. Hamilton later said that it was by far the best car he'd ever driven. That season, Mercedes almost doubled the points of their nearest foe Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship. They won 16 out of 19 races, and 13 of those were 1-2 finishes for Hamilton and Rosberg. And according to former Mercedes executive director Patty Lowe, that wasn't even their full potential. In an interview long after he had left the German team, Lowe revealed that Mercedes had actually been holding back for the first few years. They were afraid that the FIA would try to disrupt their dominance with engine restrictions or technical changes. Team boss Toto Wolff would get angry about the engine performing too well. That might be the first time a Formula One boss has complained about that. They succeeded in their political balancing act because the regulations didn't change much over the next few years. Mercedes went on to claim eight constructors' championships in a row. Looking up, after the Australian Grand Prix, Toto Wolff said that the team had learned a lot of valuable information. They were able to gather more data from the car that they desperately needed, and they were slowly closing the gap to the top runners. Lewis Hamilton's car had a noticeable red laser pointing to the ground, and it was one of many data sensors fitted to help understand the car's problems. The laser was a ride height sensor, and it will be very helpful in overcoming the dreaded porpoising problem. Toto had this to say about the developments. We are leaving Melbourne in a better state than when we arrived. We are optimistic, yet realistic, on the timeline for improvement. Some cautious optimism is starting to come from the Mercedes boss, who said just three weeks ago that he wanted to take a chainsaw to Hamilton's car to try and fix its problems. On the track, Mercedes managed to squeeze the maximum possible points out for themselves. George Russell finished on the podium for the first time in his career, and Hamilton wasn't far behind in fourth place. And in fact, the weekend could have been even better. Mercedes were reportedly due for an aerodynamic upgrade, but it didn't arrive in time. That will have to wait until at least the Italian Grand Prix. But Wolf is not too eager to install upgrades for the sake of upgrades. He thinks that any substantial upgrades right now could just further confuse them. Instead, they want to get to the root of all the problems first. It's not time for Mercedes fans to get excited just yet, but a lot of things do seem to be coming together in favor of the German world champions. Could Mercedes come back this season? And what does the future hold after the engine freezes? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.